Why McDonald's is better in Europe? On November 19, 2022, Juan Baus tweeted Who's this picture. This? Absolutely loving the design of this reusable packaging that's being introduced at McDonald's France. They give you pla like glass or plastic cups there? The packaging went viral. Like, really viral. What the fuck? Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, retweeted him and what? said something French. We saw all of this and had a lot of questions. How come McDonald's is introducing this type of packaging? Why in France? And why does it look so good? In the following months, we went down a rabbit hole and ended up modeling the entire dishware collection. As it turns out, sleek fry containers tell many stories. How the European Union is bringing conglomerates like McDonald's to their knees. Not just in France, oh, but... Oh, so it's some sort of fucking regulation, is that right? All over the continent. How a country known for everything fancy developed uh -huh. a truly unique relationship with fast food. Yeah. And a completely different type of McDonald's. McDo. McDonald's? In France, you don't understand how popular it is. And, of course, how good design can transform experiences. Have you ever been to a McDonald's in Paris? No. Why? Hmm. This is your life in weeks if you are lucky enough to turn 80 years old. Okay. And this is the amount of time you spend on your career. 80,000 hours. We choose to spend this time on researching McDonald's packaging for YouTube videos. You probably want to spend all the time on something meaningful that makes a big... Yeah, like playing video game. I want to sit in a queue for a video game that's not even out yet today. And then after I sit in a queue, I want to play it for like an hour and then get disconnected and sit in the queue again. So as a matter of fact, I think this is very relevant to me. Positive difference in the world. 80,000 Hours is also the name of today's sponsor, a nonprofit that wants to help you figure out how to do that. They've been researching the question of how you can find a fulfilling career that does good for years. They have a website that provides you all that research, a podcast, okay, and also go good for years. They have a risks from artificial intelligence. So that's like the, the fucking funniest thing is that is literally number one. It's like, so uh, you could get replaced by a robot, you could die from COVID-20, uh, there could be a nuclear holocaust, or there could be another Ukraine war. Those are the most, the worst problems, which is like, I mean, it's not really that crazy, right? God damn. And it's funny that AI is ahead of all that too. A website that provides you all that research, oh, a podcast, change. and also Makes a sense. newsletter. They have a job board that provides hundreds of open listings for potential high-impact career paths. Mm -hmm. And all of their advice and research is free forever. So what if you're not a career here? path... Internship, climate-related risk, director of partnership development, research assistant, weapons of mass destruction. Oh, I know about that. That's the thing that we couldn't find. Damn, man. Maybe they'll figure it out. Yeah, shit. Like, I'm glad they're still looking into that. It's been a while, right? And all of their advice and research is free forever. So if you're not sure how to do something that feels meaningful, helps others and makes a positive difference, maybe check out their in-depth career guide at 80,000hours.org slash fern. Life is short, but what you do with your decreasing time is up to you. Anyways, why do I have to use the word decreasing? God damn, bro. Like, I gotta weigh down after that fucking ad. Bro, that's an advertisement to remind me that I'm gonna get, I'm gonna die. Hey, hey. <laughs> Here's an ad. You're gonna die, bitch. It all started with a simple message. Yo, Juan, would you be down? He was. There is something there. The whole ad campaign around it. And okay. I think people's reactions to it are quite good. But then also maybe like, are, the question is like, are people going to steal this? When Juan is not going viral and getting featured in Drew Gooden videos, are again? people going to steal this? When Absolutely incredible ad for Mario movie here in Paris. Nah, that doesn't look like Mario, bro. Like, Mario has bigger eyes. Nah, Mario has bigger eyes, bro. Like, I I've seen a lot. That's Barrio? Yeah. Juan is not going viral and getting featured in Drew Gooden videos. He's a UX writer for some of the biggest brands out there. Oh, and Juan also lives in Paris. All right. To get a better look at this weird new packaging, we need oh, Juan also lives in Paris. To get... Okay. That looks Stokes all right. 
Okay. They got potato wedges there and not just fries? Where they think they're too good for fries over there? Fucking Frenchies? Well, you're not- they're not. They're not. The fries are fucking fine. If better- What's this? Oh, they got the nuggets. Do we have that shape here in America? I don't know if we have this one. I don't think we do. Round? No, we have the round one. That's the side? Yeah, I know. Because McNuggets come in like four different shapes. I don't know if we have that one. Look at this weird new- whoa, 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 hold up. I'm trying- I want to look at every single one of these. Was that a McFlurry over- What the fuck? God damn, bro, the Sunday's here. They don't put all that stuff in there. This is impressive. Look at this. Get this weird new packaging. We needed a Wait, wait, wait. I, I know I'm I know I'm wasting time, but I gotta see this. Oh my god. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we have we have these we have these these different things. Like this McDonald's, this looks like a McDonald's. Like you go in and you gotta make sure that uh like it's like you go into this McDonald's, it's got a dress code. What the fuck is this, man? This is crazy. Yeah, you buy this and they bring you the bill. It's $28. Man on the ground. Juan was that man. I want to see it. The design is truly spectacular. We will get to that in a minute. All First, right. we need to understand why this is happening. As we reviewed Juan's footage and dug deeper, Guys, I think they burnt some of the fries. Yeah, I, I, I think they burnt the fries, man. Like, what are they doing? We realized that it's not just the packaging that makes French McDonald's special. I feel like one of the worst things, one of the biggest black pills in life is realizing that all of the American fast food restaurants taste better in every other country. Chapter one, the rise of McDonald's. Fast food in France do not seem like a good match. It's the country of fine dining, Michelin stars and long-lasting dinners and cozy bistros. When McDonald's came to the country in 1997, the French were skeptical. 70, 80 top chefs in the country took out a newspaper ad in the, the country's biggest uh, newspaper saying that they thought it was preposterous that McDonald's was coming to France. What a bunch of assholes. And they were like, this is absolutely ridiculous. We need to stop this fast food thing. But they could not help but indulge, like everybody else. Nobody even knows who the fuck they are, but we all know who Ronald McDonald is. They can shut the fuck up. It's on the planet. Nonetheless, the company remained controversial for decades. Mm -hmm. In 1992, it launched a poster campaign showing the French chef and absolute superstar Paul Bocuse secretly dreaming about a Big Mac while examining a pile of plump chickens. The chef suit- I mean, Big Macs, like, I've never had a Big Mac, but like, McDonald's meat, like, I would say in the year 2004, was probably pretty good. Like, I don't know about now, I haven't been there for like probably 10 years, but that was a long time ago. Right away, for $2.7 million. When I found out these were real Big Mac advertisements, yeah, yeah, I, I immediately contacted my lawyers and instructed them to seek damages. How can I be seen promoting this tasteless, boneless food? In <laughs> Bro, the thing is that you just have to look at him and you know that's exactly what he was saying. Like, you just look at his fucking face, you know, yep, that's exactly what it is. Which everything is soft. His lawyer added the ad would be an intolerable insult to the Pope of world cuisine. Seven years. Jesus. This later, it got much worse for the fast food chain. Uh -huh. At the time, the World Trade Organization and the U.S. were trying to force Europe to accept imports of hormone-induced beef. Ooh. Europe resisted, and the U.S. in turn imposed heavy duties on certain luxury products as go. a retaliatory measure. Smart. One of the Fuck items em. targeted was Roquefort cheese from France. Why would anybody want that shit? Thank you, fucking... Thank you so much, the government. Thank you to the government. Please, tax the shit out of this. We don't need this in the country. Keep this the fuck over there. I don't need- this is- this is nasty. What the fuck is this? It's good? Then why's it got all these little black specks over it like it's moldy? 
This is not cookies and cream, bro. That's cheese and shit. French sheep farmers were angry and they found a symbol of American global capitalism and trade doctrine like no other, it's McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah. So a French horde went and utterly wrecked a restaurant of the chain, which was currently under construction in the small French city, <laughs> Mio. The horde was led by the activist and sheep farmer, José Bové, the Frenchest looking man Just of all. Just fucking tore that shit down. I mean, what, what even is this pipe? The McDonald's incident made Bové a national hero and leader of the French anti-globalization movement. He published a best-selling book two years later, and in That's 2007, hilarious. he ran for president. Le what? This dude burns down a McDonald's and he's about to get elected to be the president? Oh my god! Later, he went into European politics, all on the back- I bet he did! of really hating McDonald's. Jose Bové rose to global fame 15 years wow. ago after he demolished a half-built McDonald's. And like, that's the thing, bro, is he never apologized. He never said like, oh, well, you know, like, maybe it would have, uh, you know, it could have damaged property or anything like that. This dude just said, hey, yo, fuck that. We're going to burn this bitch down. Never apologized, just ran for president instead. Why not? Re Writes a book. However, despite like, Bovee's yeah, crusade, it. McDonald's could not be slayed. Off the bat, it had a competitive advantage over brasseries, bistros, and cafes. The restaurants were designated as takeout joints. This meant the value add tax was just 5.5% versus the 19.6% at gastronomic. 19.6%. We learned about this. We're trying to ship over to uh, EU for Starforge. God damn, y'all pay a lot of money for taxes, huh? 25% in Sweden? Holy shit! Atomic restaurants. The food was cheap and the French economy was bad, like always. Another factor played a much bigger role though. Mm -hmm. McDonald's always has been good at inserting itself into the local culture of the country it operates in. Yeah. But nowhere has it succeeded on such a scale as in France. The company realized that French customers were drastically different from American ones. Yeah. Americans visited McDonald's more often, at any time of the day, frequently. That's why Americans are fat. You see? We just cracked the code, guys. McDonald's did their own research and they figured this shit out. Yeah, it's the problem is because we just keep showing up. Just keep me eating all this fucking food. ...alone, opting for takeout 70% mm -hmm. of the time. In contrast, the French came in groups, spent more money per visit, and significantly more time in the restaurants. 70% yeah. of them dropped in during regular lunch and dinner hours. French McDonald's was not treated like a takeout place by customers, but like any other bistro. Like As NPR puts it, sitting down to a meal is a cornerstone of French culture. Mm, that's a so good point. the chain adapted. In the US, its restaurants are designed to attract people from afar. The Golden M glooming high, calling you to that sweet, sweet drive-in in in a car. The interior is often a little uncomfortable, intended to minimize customer visiting time and max- Yeah, they had that, uh, the reason why they have that is so, um, like they, they had like really, really bright colors, bright primary colors to get people to not go into the, the store as much. Like, purchasing so, yeah, it's like Sauron, yeah. In France, the restaurants are often sleek, modern. Yeah, look at that. That's nice, man. Holy shit, that's nice. And like the thing is that like there are still people like that live at McDonald's. Like, y'all ever been to the McDonald's and like, you know, there's like that place that's like outside of the the field of view of the front desk. And it's like a a homeless guy that's like been living there for like two weeks. And he just waits for people to leave their food, and then he goes and grabs their fries. He's got, like, a computer set up, and he, he, he's got a sleeping bag in there. And, like, the fuck, like, y'all have this, right? Like, y'all have those? Like, we have these all the time. Like, there's not a single McDonald's that doesn't have a homeless person living in it. Not where I live? Oh, bro, we got, it's like, because, I mean, it is what it is. Every McDonald's I've been to has somebody living in it. And comfortable. You can find relatively cozy corners designated specifically for larger groups of people. Sometimes there's even table service. On the outside, the Golden M is often subdued on the facade. Wow. The architecture is regionally diverse. McDonald's in France almost doesn't feel like fast food. That is so apparent even the dumbest show on the planet Emily in Paris noticed. 
This is so chic. There's no grimace, no hamburger. What's a hamburger? And never mind. Products are locally sourced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, so it's basically like McDonald's, except it, 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 it's like it's for people that think they're too. It's McDonald's for people who think they're too good for McDonald's. That that's what I that that's what I'm getting out of this. And there are unique offerings like the obvious McBaguette, but also a Croc McDo. McDonald's does this everywhere, of course, but they do it very well in France. There's a funny little review of the world-famous La Doré macarons in Paris on TripAdvisor. The reviewer concludes, the macarons taste the same as the ones sold at McDonald's across the road, Damn. except for four times as much as the price. Yeah, you might as well go to McDonald's, true? Yes. You see, this person from London is not just angry, they are onto something. The macarons at McDonald's are indeed manufactured by the same company. There it is. Fuck yeah. Today, McDonald's is universally called McDo in France. It is a cultural institution and even has its own slogan. Venez comme vous êtes. So like, come as you are. It is considered oh, like to Nirvana. be one of the biggest and most profitable markets for McDonald's in the world. So, McDo is special. But why would they come up with reusable dishware? It seems like quite the hassle. Well, the root of it all is the EU. There it is. It, here comes the conspiracy shit. Yep, it's the fucking EU. Here we go. I thought so. Chapter 2. The EU's war on plastic. Sometimes people don't realize how powerful the EU actually is. The European Union's EU. executive body, the Commission, can issue directives. These directives are goals, which must be achieved by all member countries. But every country can decide on how to get there. Once translated into national law, the member states must notify the Commission, which in turn checks if it is A-OK. -okay. Sure. Then the directive needs to be enforced in every country. If a member fails, it may get fined. Ooh. A particularly famous directive is Directive 2019-904 of the European Parliament and of the Council of 5 June 2019. Okay, wh whatever, nerds. <laughs> Basically, it's a big EU move to reduce the impact of plastic on the environment. This includes the much ridiculed ban of plastic straws and balloons. Y'all have uh, paper straws and shit where you're at? You guys have paper straws? That's crazy. I, I've had a paper straw like once in my life. You know what really, what really pissed me off is so you have like back in the day, McDonald's used to have styrofoam cups. And if you know anything about styrofoam, it insulates a hell of a lot better than a paper cup. And also you can leave a styrofoam cup on a desk for like a week before it starts leaking through. But a paper cup, you leave that on the desk for two or three days, it starts leaking through. So everybody started moving over to these paper cups. That used to piss me off because styrofoam cups are way better. They're a thousand times better. So like if a place has styrofoam cups, I would want to go there just for that specific reason. Starts leaking in hours? Bro, wait, what are you drinking? You're drinking the acid? Say sorry to the turtles? I'm not throwing them in the ocean. I put them in the garbage. Sticks, but in truth, it goes much further than plastic straws becoming paper ones. Jesus. For example, the directive makes single use plastic producers pay to clean up single use trash. And finally, the important point. It forces member countries to find ways to reduce the consumption of single-use plastics, oh, wow. such as food containers and beverage cups. France is always exceedingly extra and top of the class in combating plastic. They've gone way above what was expected and banned new single-use plastic packaging from 2040. From early 2025, new plastic packaging... So you literally can't use single-use plastic? Oh my god. That's incredible. It has to be made of 100% recycled plastic. And since the beginning wow. of 2023, single-use packaging is banned from French fast food so restaurants. Like, what about condoms? Is it like a pull-out directive from the EU as well, or what? No Which knows. brings us to this.
chapter 3. Le dessin est incroyable. When we first chatted with Juan, he shared our initial fascination with the French McDonald's reusable packaging. If you look at the fries basket, like it looks sort of, you can t immediately tell what it is, like a yeah. McDonald's fries basket. Yeah. So it looks kind of modern. It looks kind of like, you know, Apple. It Fox. looks like it's going to be more expensive than the, than the cardboard one. Whenever I see that, I'm like, that one's going to be more money. Yeah, they kind of nailed it with, with the design. Juan also filmed how you ultimately return the dishware. The process seems a lot more dignified than the usual dumping of 500 kilograms of trash into an oversized, nasty, overflowing, eat it all bin. We went. Whoa, who throws it in the bin? I thought whenever you go through the drive through, you just throw it out on the, on the street and then the pigeons eat it. You telling me people use the bin? That's crazy. People at my McDonald's never did that. On to model the dishware based on his footage and promotional material. Because why not? Yeah. It's undeniably French. The design studio behind it is called Ilium. They picked a plastic called Trident for the various containers, which is similar to glass and ceramic in its hardness and transparency okay. and preserves the organ organ organoleptic qualities of the food vents graining striations have all been designed to address their functions in the best possible way yeah, greasy hands need great grip yeah. the development of this technology took over two years wow. and surprisingly it gets stolen a lot the reused dishware went viral with good right but it's just one small part of a much more elegant whole for a country where eating at the restaurant is the norm it makes even more sense that the food is not needlessly overpacked anymore. However, it's unclear if relying on reusable plastic is actually more sustainable than switching to long-wearing glass or china. The French government promises to remain... Like, I don't know anything about any of this shit, but it seems like it'd be a better idea to me to just think of a type of plastic that doesn't destroy the fucking environment than just try to change the entire way people live their life. But, I mean, what the fuck do I know? Maybe you can't Vigilant on this question. McDonald's has been doing very tiny steps towards improving their packaging for more than 30 years. Jeez. Ironically, we made a video in German before knowing about all this, criticizing the chain for greenwashing their enormous trash footprint in Germany and pretend fixing the issue. Some EU directives and one chunky national law later, we get this. To us, this is a story of how business, if set on the right track through legislation, can really leap forward. McDo really did turn around the French anti-plastic legislation to their benefit, simply through introducing a design so noteworthy, people talk about it. Like us. That's nuts, bro. What the fuck? Wow. McDo, yeah. Uh, is it weird? Because in my experience, France is kind of dirty. I mean, not the McDo. Apparently not. Yeah, I kind of want to go to a McDonald's. Yeah, it's just like, I don't even know what to say about that. That's so crazy. So, like, marketing directors get paid a lot of money. I mean, to be fair, like, it, it's like, whenever you look at it, it makes sense, right? Because, like, they try to come into the French culture and they have, like, a totally different restaurant culture. This dude fucking burns the bitch down. Then they say, okay, well, let's make this more of a sit-down restaurant and make it look like a, a place that you want to be in. And then people show up and they stay there. I think that makes a lot of sense, man. It really does. But I just find this to be very interesting. Like, I've never really left the States before, so I've never seen this for myself. But I bet it must be so weird to go to another country and go to McDonald's and, and see how different it is. Also, like, uh, it's good to see how, uh, you know, I don't know if they should ban plastic here or not. Like, I, I'm not, like, what the fuck do I know? But uh, it, it's good to see how at least the EU, like, you know, they try to push this stuff. I mean, I, I wish more people had, like, the perspective that, like, companies will always find a way to make money e even if you make something against the rules. They'll always find another way. We shoot rockets in the moon, but we can't make better plastic? I mean, uh, what the fuck do I know, right? Yeah, I just can't believe that, man. 
Uh, paper straws suck ass. They get all soggy and ruin the drink. 100%. The point strong national regulation that favors customers and public interest over corporations is objectively better for both the customer and the business. I think in a lot of cases that's true, and I think this is a great example of that. Uh, really, I mean, we have some places that you have stuff like this. Usually you don't reuse the drink cups. Uh, that's different. Uh, but over here, there are reusable plates that you go for certain different places that are like, you know, in between fast food and uh, a sit down restaurant. So, yeah, this is pretty fucking crazy. Like, I, I didn't know this at all. But again, like whenever I hear about a country in the EU having to, you know, doing something reusable, I, I bro, I called that shit so quick. Definitely, definitely going to be the fucking EU making them do it. Chipotle baskets? I mean, no. I mean, Chipotle baskets, we don't have that. So you love it? I mean, I do, am I loving it? Is that the thing, right? Yeah, I don't know. EU all time. Yeah, what the hell? In and out basket? How does this work with drive through They probably just have paper paper stuff, right? Yeah. Well, maybe they... Do they, do, do they have drive through in France? Because they have cars in France, right? No cars. <laughs> cars got added last patch? That's crazy. So they do have cars. Is it like a normal thing in like, let's say Paris, to own a car? Or is it something that like only rich people have? No. God, thank God I am an American. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. This is a great video. I'm gonna give you uh, give you guys a link, give it a like. Uh, I'm gonna give these guys a sub. This one's really good, man. Yeah. Yeah, I used to have three cars. About two of them didn't work. But, you know, uh, two and a half of them didn't work. But, yeah, I used to have three cars.